Hello guys, welcome to the seventh class of the expert course from Scriptcase. Uh, my name is Carlos, I'm your instructor for this course. Basically today we're going to create the security module for the project. Okay, so let's open up here. Let's open up here the appointments. Okay, um, basically what is the security module? Um, it's a module that controls the access to the applications that you're developing in Scriptcase. We have currently a couple of types of modules. Uh, if you go here to Modules Security, uh, this is where you'll create the security module for your project. Um, currently, Scriptcase supports four types of security modules. There's the user one, which creates applications based on the security for the user level, where the application is linked to the user login. There's the application level that creates um, an application based, actually it creates the, the security module based on an application level security. So it's like the user has privileges to access uh, certain types of applications and not others. There's the group level, which basically it's similar to the application security, but instead of limiting the access to one specific user, you can limit the access to a whole group of users. And there's the LDAP, which is the option that Scriptcase offers to sync your security with your local LDAP server. All right. But in this case, I'm going to use the group. All right. Next. And clearly, I need to create the security tables when creating a security module at first. So firstly, I need to select the connection. And then I have these options here. I can either use existing tables or create new tables with the prefix that I inform here. In this case, I already have the tables created, so I'm going to click here, use existing tables. All right, let's go use that. Oh, almost forgot. Um, in script case nine, we implemented the option use social network. So this case it allows you to integrate the login application with external APIs to login, for example, G+, Facebook, LinkedIn. You can use those types of login information to access here directly your project. So, I'm going to use the existing tables first. Next. Since I selected the option use existing tables, I need to reference each table with their correct level of information. So we have here the user. The user is normally called sec users, on which the login is login, password being the password, name being the name, email being the email, active being the active, activation code, and administrator privileges. The group will be the sec groups. The ID being the group ID, description being the description. Oops, I forgot to inform the other ones. Um, the application will be the sec apps. The application name will be the app name, description will be the description, app type. Then we'll go here to user group, and this will be the sec user groups, actually, yeah, sec user groups, log in, group ID, go into the group application, it's going to be sec group apps, group ID, app name, privileges access, insert, delete, update, export, and print. Next. Well here basically is the configuration, the base configuration for the security module. Basically we can create uh, the applications using a prefix of our choice. Uh, currently we're going to use the app in the line. On the encryption we now have more types. We have the MD5, the SHA1, the SHA256, 
the SHA-512. Um, previously we only had the MD-5 option here for the encryption. As for this project, we're using MD-5, so I'm going to use MD-5 for this option. Enable the security for all the applications? Yes. Um, set all the security applications in the folder? Security? Yes. Uh, apply which theme to the applications? SC9 Rhino? If there's any log module created, I could select it here. And if there's a menu created, basically I do have a menu, so I'm going to select that one. Alright, let's go here to the next one. Login. Um, the login itself... Um, we can select a couple of fields here, which is the user password. Uh, there's the retrieve password option. I'm going to set it to reset by new one, actually by email. Um, allow the registration of new users? No. Um, skip the email settings. Now here comes the template. I'm going to use the new control application that Scriptcase 9 offers, which allows us to use a custom HTML template. I'm not going to use the one that basically is supposed to be um, referenced as the appointments login. Alright, I'm going to show you guys um, the overview of how you can implement your own HTML in the application itself. And I'm going to use an external library to import and HTML, in fact, to the application itself and load the CSS and JavaScript to it. So yes, I'm going to use the login template, but I'm not going to select any one of them now. Hold up, let me reload it here. It's because there isn't any login templates here at the moment. Actually, enable external libraries. Let me save this samples that I have here to it project. Save as. Um, use library. Save project libraries. Let me close this. Let me reload. It's supposed to be showing here. But no matter, I'll can, I can enable it later on. Let's go to next. Okay. Um, this is the default settings for the admin user, which the login is admin, the password being admin, the name, email, and group administrator. That's, that's standard. Here it's next. Yes, it's going to look for all the applications that I have created and add them to the applications, um, actually the access privileges, which is the SEC group apps table. So yes, it's going to look for all the applications. This option here offers me to create a profile based on the security module I'm creating, allowing me to further on in other projects create a security module based on this one that I'm using. But that's not the case, I'm just going to generate source code directly. We have an error here. Not sure where. Let's see the log. Oh, it's the login application. Well, no problem, it's because it doesn't have a template yet. Alright, let me go here to home. There's the app login here. Okay, so we created the app login to be the new type of control application. Basically what we have here are is basically the initial template that the application offers us. So what do we see here at first? We have an editor on the right side, we have a check button on the top left, and we have some other types. Actually, we have a small toolbar on the top of the editor that allows us to access other files, in fact. All right? Here, we have the HTML simple template that contains um, the HTML tags, the head, 
of the application itself. We have a form tag, which actually contains a couple of the script case variables here. All right, so we have here the SE form attributes, um, the SE field info, uh, my field actually, uh, class, SE field class, type text, SC form submit info, info. Okay, what is this actually? What are these variables that we see here? These are a couple of markings that are required for the application to run. For instance, we have a comment here, which is SC page char set. It's for it to allow you to use a char set based on your project. That's required. There's the SCJS lib that's also required, so it can load the JavaScript libraries that Scriptcase offers by standard for all its applications. There's the S form, SC form hidden that's also required so the Scriptcase can render the form and the SC field label for this field is fact. When you click here on the check button it looks uh, for any mistakes that we're seeing here in this template in fact. So we have here divided in groups. We have the tips that, let's say, you can click here, SC display user error. We have this SC display user error, which is a function that displays the error messages after the form v validates the submit done. Where is um, this SC display error? If you click here on JavaScript, you'll see that error here, all right? This is kind of generated by default. So we have the error message. We have the debug message. These are just small tips on how to use it, actually. There's this required part here, which is the SC field info login, which kind of requires us to actually paste this input to the login itself. So for example, if I click here, it requires me to place this. Why? If I open up here the fields, it has these three fields, in fact. The login, password, and links. So if I just copy this and paste it here and set it to check. Alright, it gives me an error because the SC field class is not loaded. But that's because it's required. So if I click this, actually copy this and set it here. Let's check it again. Okay, we have the info also. That also requires this one. Check. All right, we have a couple more optional ones, which is the SC field log label login. For instance, just copy this uh, marking and place it on top of the login, in fact. So for instance, just place it here and it's going to load the label for that. And there is also this other field here Hmm. Hold up. The markup for the menu option inclusion, it can be a select object, a radio object, a list, or a list of links. Uh, for a select and radio views types, the field will be created attribute name links. The ID itself. Hold up. ID select. Okay, so to ask. Since the links itself is a select type field, the ID attribute is also created by select. The ID will be appended. The field will be created with the following attributes. Must have to be placed. For radio and link views, each option is encapsulated by a div. Hold up, let me analyze this. The ID will be appended with the sequential starting one for each. So like what? ID sec field 
links one. So it's like I create a select field. We create a select field here. So, um, option, I think it's like this. I'm not sure actually. So, kind of if I get this radio, the ID attribute is also created for selecting. So, the ID for select needs to be this one. So, if I just place here ID equals. I'm just guessing, I'm not sure actually. Okay, so let's go with that. Let's try to see if that works. SC required message is missing. Okay, so it requires this one. I'm just going to place this one right here. Okay. Okay, so it worked. There's the forgotten links, but there's a... Oh. Alright, 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 alright. Actually, I didn't need... This. I just placed it in it. So it's... Kind of better than I expected, actually. I haven't recreated um, a select field directly on uh, doing this, in fact. So it's kind of better then. Yeah. So, yes, this is a pure uh, HTML. As you can see, it doesn't have any um, layout, in fact, on it. Basically, what we can do is simple. We can either like create the HTML from scratch here and do some CSS here and place your JavaScript here. That's one. Or you can go here to external libraries and use an external library in fact. Let me just edit something here. Um, go here to external libraries. Let me edit something. Edit samples. Log in. You have three, four ex for exactly samples of login. Project. Project. Get this and place it a little bit higher. All right, let me save that. Saving that, let me go back here to the app login. So, using external libraries, I have the option to use a script case level um, library, a public library, or a project level library, which basically I can go into go here to, to login. I'm going to select this first one. I can click here on preview. And take a look at directly here what we have. All right. I'm going to save it, in fact. And I'm going to run this application. Hold up. Let me go back into the external libraries. There's just a floating curly brackets here. So if I just save this, if I go back here and refresh this page, it didn't load. Hold up, if I saved it there, I had to generate it again. All right. 
So yes, um, this one's using Bootstrap, in fact. All right, these are templates that we prepared for you guys to use in any project you want, basically. So this is an example of what exactly you can do in the control application. This basically, what we can do is, I could have basically copied um, this entire HTML, in fact, and pasted it in the HTML part of the control application and it, it'll load the entire form as it is displayed here. You can create custom forms using this, in fact. Um, for instance, you can use even import bootstrap to it. Basically, all you need to do is download bootstrap directly. Um, and you're going to import it into script case using the external libraries all right you can download it here directly or you can use this style sheet directly and placing it in the head of your form actually the control application sorry um, you can use get mdl dot io which is the material design from Google All right, you can use this as well. Basically, um, when I say using these themes directly on your control application, it means like you can do, let me get here an input example so that you can see. This, for instance. You can do this directly by using the material design, for example, on this for on this control application because you can't it allows you to input your custom HTML and CSS looking at that you can do the entire form application just by using this control because if you want to use any custom themes in fact you can use these two or any other ones that you pr that you have in your personal opinion to use actually. So, um, continuing on to the part of adapting this app to work with the rest of the project, since we already got over with the, the theme, which basically previously in script case 8.1 was very difficult. Basically I had to open up the CSS application themes, start modifying a bunch of directives, in the form area, in the control area, removing borders, uh, removing radiuses. I had to create a button scheme customized so I can't use it up. I mean, to create a button like this in script case 8.1, it was a sacrifice actually. I had to cr inject a lot of CSS through the fields that were offered to us actually. But yeah, I guess this was a big step for script case. And seriously, I really loved it. Yeah, this this is very cool, actually. Well, um, enough uh, talking about that. Uh, let's go back here to the events, actually. Let's start here. Let me see the routines I need to create for this one. Well, since I created here, let's see. Um, all right. Before modifying this app login directly, I need to access to other applications. So let's go back here to home. I need to access the form staff and form customer. In fact, this one and this one. I'm going to edit both of them. All right. Doing this, I'm going to add a routine to the on validate and on script in it to both applications. But, let me explain exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, there's a relationship between these applications and the security module itself, which basically is the SEC users table. The staff and customers table have a relationship with that table in fact. So, that is why that I'm going to have to do some changes here. Adding two fields basically, a password 
and confirm password to both applications. All right, let me open up here the code repository. Let's do the staff first. Let me close this one. Okay, forms, form staff. We have an on before insert. Okay, before uh, copying this in, let me create those fields. Two fields. All right, both of them are going to be text. Um, the first one is going to be called PSWD, and the next one is going to be confirm PSWD. So PSWD confirm PSWD password confirm password. Okay. So I'm going to say that um, it's going to be a password field for both of them. All right. Assign them a password field. I'm going to go here to the events on before insert actually. Let me save that. I'm going to paste the code I just copied. So basically it's going to look for the sec users login. All right. Doing a lookup, see if it already exists or not. If it doesn't, it's going to encrypt the password to MD5 and it's going to insert to the users table and also into this users group. Okay, the same thing I'm going to do here to the customers. Let me just save this one. Let's go here to the customers. All right, um, the customer on before inserts. It's the same thing actually. Let me create those fields. Oops, I can select two of them. PSWD, password, confirm, PSWD, Confirm password. Set it to a password field, both of them. Okay. Well, let's go to the events here on before insert. And it's basically going to do the same thing. Insert to the sec users. Verify if the login already exists. Okay. So I'm going to save this. Uh, just a moment. Let me see here the steps. Okay. Since these two are already done, let's go back here to the app login. What I'm going to do now, let me open up here the code for the control, login actually, on script init. Okay, this one I'm going to use. Okay, so I have here the SE reset APL status that um, refreshes the uh, status of current application, removing all determined manipulations on forms like I can dynamically change how they start. Like in, I can set it to start in an update mode. So this first macro, it resets that. It sets all as the standard behavior of the applications as they should. Uh, the second macro that we see here, which is the SC reset global, it kind of remembers the uh, function for PHP that resets the session variables. In this case, I'm reset, um, resetting the user login, user email, user name, group, global staff ID, and glo 
customer ID. All right. Let me see here the other code. Actually, do I have? And I have this on validate that I can do. Let's go here to the on validate. And just refresh. Put this one here. Okay, it's the same thing that we had before, but it adds a little bit more validations to it. Um, I'm getting the login field and the password field. Verifying if there's any SQL injection. Yeah, that's a macro that Scriptcase offers that protects the database, in fact. Getting that information, I'm doing a select query, getting the privilege of the administrator if the user has any, um, checking if the user is active, um, getting the user's name, email, group ID, and basically doing a inner join here, returning it by the login and password that I have here. Okay, um, going down here a little bit more, validating if if it's active, all right, applying the privileges and the group. Second, I'm getting the user group itself, checking if it's group two, if it's group two, I'm getting the staff ID, staff name, staff email from the sec users log, actually from the staff group, getting the sec users login as the one informed on up here actually Oops, this one right here um, doing that I'm applying the values here and setting a global variable yeah this is another way that you can declare a global variable which is the SE set global I'm passing this information here directly which is the staff ID third one actually case 3 it's the same thing as for the customer and if it's neither one of them, then, it, then it's the administrator. Setting all the global variables here, and then going here to the on validate when success. That's the validate success, which is a programming method that I have here. Hold up, let me close this. when success and it's loading the privileges for all the applications that are going to be accessed by then it's going to redirect to the menu application all right there's a bunch of methods here but it's created based on what you need to do on when you create a security module for example there's the methods for the social network connectively we have here we have the option to see if there's any privileges. All right, um, link the user. So it's kind of che checking all the information here of the injection. All right, I'm closing here. Let me check the other events. We have the onload. It sets an NPL conf for the add new users. But since I just disabled that, there's no need there. The own application init uh, resets the APL call for those two applications. So an idea is is that when I run this application now, I can inform here admin, the password be one two three four, sign in. I'm redirected to the menu, and it's supposed to load here the dashboard based on the user that I just logged in. Okay, um, let me see another one. I think I have it here. Um, link help. Abraham. Let's log in with the staff, actually. Let me go here, log out. Abraham. One, two, three, four. Log in. Okay, so this is the calendar that we have. Accessing on a monthly view. Let's go back a couple of months. Wait, we have a scheduled one right here. All right. Clicking here, we can actually view the address. Okay. 
Um, let's log in with a customer. Log out. The customer be Matthews. One, two, three, four. And it's redirected to that grid appointments customers, allowing it to display for the user all its um, appointments done. All right. I can make a new request. All right, basically I can set here request error. Uh, format and antivirus request. Okay, um, I wanted to start at 11.30. Save. I'm redirected to the grid. 11.30. It's set to Anderson 250. You can open up here the nested grid and I have all that information here all right so guys are there any questions about uh, these applications okay I have a question here from Douglas um, take a look here where the comment lines we place with code and login setup um, the comment lines you mean this one right here So let me open up here the external library. That's a bit better. Um, here, external libraries. Edit. Login. All right. You mean these, right? Okay. Um, let me go back here to the login. Inspect. Okay, here's the head. Well, the JS that we had here, which is this SCJS lib, um, you can see here basically it's all this JavaScript code that's been imported to the application itself. And a chart set, there may be a metadata here loose, but I'm not seeing it. There's a CSS, script, 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 script. Link, CSS, script, script, script. Yeah, the metadata should be here somewhere. Not sure. Check here if I set it manually. Application, settings. Okay, it's because the chart set may not be default here. Let me try it now. It's supposed to be showing here now the head, in fact. Metadata viewports. Okay, here's the chart set. Okay. So yeah, it's a interpretation that the compiler from Scriptcase does. You inform those required um, tags that it shows on the left side list, um, placing it between your HTML, in fact. So yeah, that gives you the liberty of creating any template that you want. The only obligation I need to do is that when I saw it first, I really s thought it was a bit demanding, a little bit because actually I haven't seen most forms today using submit type buttons but it's something that the control application requires normally today you create a normal button and add an on-click event to it to be triggered by JavaScript but uh, since this um, control application is mixed with PHP internally 
it requires a submit button, in fact, to do so. That's the only requirement that it actually does. That kind of goes out the common ways for you to create a form nowadays. Any questions relating that you guys feel that you have about this course, in fact, or any other things relating to developing with script case that I may know and I can help you out if I actually can, in fact. So, yeah, I think that's it then. Okay, guys, um, again, have a nice evening. Be seeing you guys tomorrow, right? Bye, guys. <laughs>